Today, we become legends. The tale of the Dirty Bubble meta, perhaps the most legendary meta Smite has ever had, is a cautionary one. With lessons to be learned about how to balance certain aspects of the game and keep it fun. I call this meta legendary in the sense that it's the stuff of legend, not in the sense that it was good for the game. If you're hyped for the new skins in Season 9 and want to pick some up, head over to nexus.gg slash intersect with a 3 to get gems and support the channel at no extra cost. There's new Season 9 bundles on there, plus if any of you are Paladins gamers, there's stuff for that too. Link for that will be down below, but let's jump in. The Dirty Bulba build was incepted way back in 2015 at the tail end of Season 2. The build had variations, but the general theme was always that you build full tank and cooldown on squishies that don't normally go tank. I'm talking Breastplate of Valor, Bulwark, Hide of the Urchin and Magi's Cloak in one build on Hebo. That's the level of build warping that happened back then. On the topic of Magi's Cloak, many believe the misconception that the phrase Dirty Bubble was referring to the bubble that Magi's puts on your god when active with the dirty referring to the cheesy strategy of the build. This, however, is not the reason for the name. There was actually an innovative theory crafter that pioneered the build back in the day by the name of, you guessed it, the Dirty Bubble. This is where the name for the build actually comes from. The Dirty Bubble originally explored this type of build on Alquang and Thanatos, both of whom have executes and were actually the only two executes in the game at that point. Executes don't scale with power, they just kill the gods, so going tankier on execute characters was probably the inspiration for this type of build. It's worth noting that usually the Dirty Bubble build was used in solo, but it definitely bled into other roles as well. A Reddit post by MetYankee, a pro support at the time, outlined the original parameters for the build that Dirty Bubble was using. For Mages, Shoes of Focus, Breastplate of Valor, Ethereal Staff, Bulwark of Hope, Hide of the Urchin, and then either Spear of the Magus or Obsidian Shard for either Flat or Percent Pen. With the Pen bought late in the build because defense outtrades damage early on, and that's the general theme that we're abusing with this build. For Hunters, there were only two outlined in the post that actually worked very well with the build, that being Abruzan Cab and Bruler, Bruiser versions of their former selves. These two bought into Breastplate first item, then Transcendence, Frostbound Hammer, Soul Eater, and the final two slots being Flex slots. And finally, Dirty Bubble for Assassins looked something like Reinforce Greaves, Breastplate of Valor, Bulwark of Hope, Titan's Bane, then Situational Defense items for the final slot. This build is basically a popular way to build warriors back then pasted onto an Assassin. A single Titan's Bane on an otherwise full tank build back in the day was extremely effective before they changed the way Titan's Bane works to be less effective against squishies. So those are the general builds, three classes only of course since warriors and guardians already kind of build this way. In the same post, Met Yankee also outlined an early tier list for the Dirty Bubble build. We can clearly see that Hebo was, in their opinion, the strongest god for the build. This makes sense since Hebo's cooldowns are pretty low and with one penetration item back in the day to boost his base damages and he could just never die and always be spamming one for little bits of damage over and over and eventually win the fight. Apwash and Nox are number 2 and 3 for different reasons. Apwash was in my opinion the strongest user of the build back in the day since he restores percent health and percent mana when picking up corpses. With high max health and mana plus high cooldown and caps protections, Apwash was literally immortal unless anti-healed severely when using the Dirty Bubble build. As for Nox, she already sort of works as a tank with max cooldown since her 2-1 combo is so deadly and her ult reduces enemy damage output by 40%. The Dirty Bubble build just allowed her to live forever, still have max cooldown, and spam out those 2-1 combos forever. Thanatos is placed slightly above the rest, so I'll quickly talk about him too. So Thanatos of course has an execute, which we discussed earlier, doesn't need power and penetration to do its damage, it just kills the guy, so it's nice to be tankier with less damage when you have an execute. But Thanatos also has up to 35 free flat penetration built into his kit, which means he can go even more greedy on the overpowered tank items back then and still do decent damage because Pen of course applies to base damages as well as scaling. So even if you're building no power, Pen is still very useful to increase your base damages. There were definitely other notable characters on the list that worked well with this build, but these were the main like top 4 abusers of it I guess, and they all demonstrate a different characteristic that allowed them to abuse a full tank build. Hebo has low cooldowns, high base damages, and can just whittle down enemies while never dying because of his build. Apwash infinitely heals a percent of his health from corpses, so more health and defense plus cooldown for more corpses, that's how he exploited this build. Nox just sorta of works with it in general, and more chances to hit the combo while not being able to die is amazing for her, plus the ult reduces enemy damage output by a lot, making her even more unkillable. 
And Thanatos has built-in flat pens, so he doesn't even need to go a pen item, which is usually required in Dirty Bubble builds, plus he has an Execute. The Dirty Bubble meta is a great case study in what happens when defense falls out of line of damage, and there's no point building damage anymore. Back in the earlier seasons of Smite, protection items were generally stronger than now relative to their damage item counterparts, which allowed this sort of build to flourish. Let me know your own thoughts on the Dirty Bubble build, and if you played back then, like I did, then you can definitely regale us with some of your Tales of War, where some Applash went 25-0 and zero and healed 200k HP with his corpses, but other than that, don't forget to drop a like on the video before you leave, and I'll catch you guys in another one later on. Have a great day, and peace out, you nerds.